Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. Now, welcome back, Nadia and Yasmin. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the pointless final, and this is your last chance. Remind us what happened. There was a question about comics, which are not really my strong points, and uh, it was French comics uh, to make it a bit more difficult, and uh, my mind just went blank, <laughs> and I didn't really know what I was doing on Asterix that one. Asterix <laughs> and Dan. Yes, Asterix. They're not really things you can guess, actually. No. You either read them or you don't. Um, what do you like to do for fun, Nadia? I quite like karaoke. Really? Yes. Do you have a particular song that is your star turn? Um, I tend to start off with. <laughs> start off with? <laughs> I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. Splendid. Yeah, always gets the crowd going. <laughs> <laughs> what, what tends to be your last song? Um, I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> Very, very good indeed. Well, it's great to have you back on the show. Let's hope we see more of you this time round. Very, very best of luck. And next, we welcome Patrick and Chris. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, we met originally online, uh, but for whatever reason, we didn't hit it off. But then about a year later, completely by happenstance, we met in a bar, and that's when we started How dating. did you remember that you'd met online? Well, you made a good impression. Had you... But you, did, you said you didn't hit it off. <laughs> or did you hit it off so spectacularly badly that... Uh, You'd remembered each other. Well, I think it's the, you know, it's like, do we go and actually go on the date? And it never actually came about, so. That's what it was. Uh, but what do you do, Patrick? I'm working at the um, Olympics uh, with a security firm, and I uh, basically induct sort of 40 to 50 grumpy builders every morning. Quite exciting, though, to be on, on, on the site of something as, uh, as international as it's that. It's awesome. <laughs> I know all the facts about it now, so I have to do it every morning. So. <laughs> Give us the most interesting fact about um, the stadium. The stadium is built in a bowl, which is uh, below nine metres original ground level. Building it in a bowl means that all 80,000 spectators get a better view of the action. There you go, that's what I do every morning. That was... That yeah, was that's good. That is going to ruin round two facts about the Olympic Stadium, I'll tell yeah. you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris, what do you do? I'm a PhD student at the London School of Economics. Very good. In what? History. History. Any, which, which particular period? Um, American diplomatic history from the mid-20th century. Oh, be. there goes round three. <laughs> Excellent. Well, very best of luck to you. Uh, and next, we welcome back Nick and Charlie. You were on the show last time. Remind us what happened. Uh, we were now in the second round. Um, I kind of mucked up on initials of people. Uh, it was not a good round. It was not. I, I tell you say. what, it wasn't pointless as proudest moment, I have to say. <laughs> we had a board that was pretty much as empty at the end of the round as it was at the beginning. Nick, what do you think we'll see you through to head-to-head -to -head and maybe beyond? Well, we're hoping for something uh, quite scientific. Uh, something Latin America related would be fine. We had some Latin American authors coming up. We'll power through, no problem. OK, very good indeed. <laughs> when we say we. we. Can. <laughs> well, very best of luck to the pair of you. It's great to have you back. And finally, we've got Mick and Cheryl. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, we're father and daughter. We come from Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. And I'm a uh, retired fire officer. I used to work for London Fire Brigade. Blimey, that, how long did you do it for? That well, it's thir 30 years service. So 30 that's, uh, years. That's pretty normal for a firefighter. Isn't yeah. It? Um, and what about you, Cheryl? I'm a, um, as well as being a mum to two young daughters, I'm a planning officer. Very good indeed. How, how old are your daughters? They are one and two. One and two, you're looking very fresh, considering. <laughs> Had a good night's sleep. So. Yeah, good. Well, yes, exactly. Who's looking after them now? My husband. Very, is, he, <laughs> is he good at that? It's nice that you seem remarkably relaxed. He's, he's pretty good. He's, he's pretty good. good. So I'm good. hoping they'll be OK when I get home. Very good indeed. <laughs> Very best of luck to the pair of you. Thanks. Great to have you here. We'll find out more about all of you as the show goes on. There's only one person left for me to introduce. Don't play him at Scrabble. He knows every single word. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. 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 How are you this afternoon? You well? Uh, I am well, thank you, Richard. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Two returning pairs today. I think both pairs were very unlucky last time. I think Nadia and Yasmin had a, a tough category in round one. I think Nick and Charlie were so close to getting through to the head-to-head. -head. So we should see more from both teams, I suspect. Should be a very, very good show, I think. I think we've got four very strong pairs today. 
OK, thanks very much, Richard. Well, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £5,250. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Jewellery. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many gemstones as they could. Richard. Yeah, all the correct answers in this round will be precious or semi-precious gemstones that can be used to make jewellery. OK, uh, Nadia and Yasmin, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first again. Right, in this round, you'll be pleased to hear we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. Your first set of seven answers reads like this. Pearl, aquamarine, ruby, abadivine, tourmaline, jasper, emerald. I'll read those one more time. Pearl, aquamarine, ruby, abadivine, tourmaline, jasper, and emerald. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and at least one of those answers is incorrect. Pick an incorrect one, and you will score the maximum of 100 points. So, Nadia. Um, I'm thinking I may have to go for an obvious one, just to be safe and not what, do what I did in the last round. <laughs> so I am going to go for Ruby. Ruby, you say? OK, well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Ruby. Good luck. Oh. That's quite a high score, Nadia. <laughs> that's 88 for Ruby. Richard? Uh, yes, a mineral form of aluminium oxide, which makes it sound slightly less appealing. Chris, gemstones. I don't know many of them. Mm-hmm. So it's a question of whether I want to risk one of the obscure answers or answer with one of the obvious ones. And I'm going to risk it. I'm going to answer aquamarine. Aquamarine, you're saying? OK. Let's see if aquamarine is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said aquamarine. Yes, it's right. Seven for Aqua Marine, Richard. Yeah, good answer, Chris. A, a pale blue yellowish uh, gemstone, mainly found in Brazil. It's uh, the birthstone of anyone born in March, an Aqua Marine. Thank you very much, Nick. Do you recognise any of those gemstones? Well, I think there are a couple there that are yeah. quite obvious, really. So I'm quite tempted to take a punt. Um, I don't know why. It's probably a foolish moment, and I'm sure Charlie's glaring at me as I speak. But I'm, I'm going to go for it. And uh, I'm going to take a shot with Jasper. Jasper. OK, sounds good to me. Let's see if Jasper's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Jasper. He's right. <laughs> Very well done, Nick. <laughs> Very well done. That's a pointless answer. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £5,500, and it scores you nothing. Very well done. Jasper, Richard? Yeah, well played, Nick. It's, it's an opaque variety of the silica mineral chert, as you well know. I don't know how many carrots it is, though. <laughs> Very well done, Nick. Great answer there. Now then, Cheryl, you are the last person to have this board, so take us through all the stones, if you like, and then pick one. Well, I was going to say Jasper. I tell you what, there might easily be another pointless answer on that board. They I know, well, too. if I run through the board, pearl and emerald are obvious ones. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure between Aberdavine and tourmaline. But I think I'm going to shut my eyes and go with tourmaline. Tourmaline, Cheryl. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said tourmaline. Good luck, Cheryl. It's right. <laughs> it's right. Two points for Tourmaline. 
Yeah, very, very well played. Uh, it can be pink, green, or colourless uh, tourmaline. It's an alkaline mineral. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. There are some obvious ones there. Emerald, of course, is a, uh, is a gemstone, would have scored you 65. Pearl, again, that would have scored you 24. And so by a process of elimination, Abba Divine is an incorrect answer. It's a small bird resembling a goldfinch. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Nick and Charlie looking very, very strong there on nothing. Very well done, Nick. Great answer there. Up to two, Cheryl and Mick also looking pretty strong. Up to seven for Chris and Patrick. Also looking very strong. And Nadia and Yasmin way out in front there on 88. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for gemstones, and we have got moonstone, topaz, opal, malachite, diamond, corbamite, alexandrite. Now, I'll read those one more time. Moonstone, topaz, opal, malachite, diamond, corbamite, alexandrite. And I can tell you again that at least one of those is pointless, and at least one of those is incorrect. Pick an incorrect one and you'll score 100 points. Now then, Mick. Well, of those, I could see a couple I might know, but I think, though I'm not 100% sure, I think I'll go for Moonstone. Moonstone. What do you think, Cheryl? She just made this face, make sure... <laughs> I probably wouldn't have gone for Moonstone, but he wouldn't have gone for Tourmaline, so fingers crossed. Fingers tightly crossed. OK, well, let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line, Mick. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. It's right, and you're through. Very well done indeed, Mick. That's a cracking score. Three takes your total up to five. Richard? Yeah, a very beautiful stone with a silvery blue iridescence. They're almost all from Sri Lanka, moonstones. Charlie? Right, I know a couple of them out there, I think. Especially from a computer game, weirdly, that we used to have where you used to uh, emboss swords with uh, gemstones. So, and they gave them magical powers, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for Topaz. Topaz, you say? OK, there we are. Topaz, second one down. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Here's your red line. Nice and high. Topaz. Well done, you're through. 26. Twenty-six for topaz. Really. Yes, an aluminium silicate, as, uh, as you well know. Maybe the geekiest reason for giving an answer we've ever had on Pointless, which is great. <laughs> you get topaz all over. You get it in the UK and the Cairngorms, particularly good topaz. So remember, we are looking for precious and semi-precious gemstones used to make jewellery. You, Patrick, are on seven. The high scorers are still Yasmin and Nadia on 88, which means if you can score 80 or less, you are through to the next round. I think I'll probably just... Play it safe, because it's only 80 needed. I'm going to go with Opal. Opal. There it is, third one down. Opal. Here's your red line. If you get below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see if Opal's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Well done. Yep, you've done it. 45 for Opal. Takes your total up to 52. Yeah, well played, Patrick. Uh, perfect tactic there. Uh, the traditional gemstone of people born in October, the opal. Black opal's particularly precious. Very good. Now, Yasmin, I have terrible news. You are the high scorers before you've even answered. This happened last time. <laughs> but you have the opportunity to leave another £250 in the jackpot. It's a little parting gift. I think I'll go for... Um... Corbamite? Corbamite, you're going to go for? There it is, one up from the bottom. Corbamite. What do you think, Nadia? Corbamite? <laughs> yes. Um, Would maybe a corbamite? Possibly. Necklace? <laughs> Be nice. Quite possibly. Let's hope so. OK, let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said corbamite. I'm afraid no red line for you. You're already the high scorers. Oh, oh, bad luck. Sorry. Bad <laughs> luck, but well tried, Yasmin. I'm afraid that's an incorrect dance, which scores you 100 points, taking your total up to 188. Richard. Yeah, unlucky, Yasmin. You had to have a go to point this one, though. Uh, Corbamite is, a, is an imaginary substance dreamt up by Captain Kirk on Star Trek. Okay. He was once... Uh, the Enterprise was once under attack, and he warned them not to attack, otherwise the ship's supply of Corbamite 
would explode. So it's both fictional and imaginary, which is about as wrong as an answer can be. But let's take a look at the rest of the board. Diamond, obviously, uh, that would have scored you a very hefty 93. Of those other two, Alexander, what do you think? Pointless uh, Malachite. I've heard of. Malachite, absolutely, is a pointless answer. Very well done if you said Malachite at home. And Alexandrite. I'm going to say that's pointless too. You are absolutely right. So very well done if you said either of those at home. OK, well, thanks, Richard. At the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm so sorry to say it's Nadia and Yasmin. <laughs> dear, oh dear, again, we have to say goodbye to you. Far too soon. Yes, but we've had a really good time. Yeah, and it's been brilliant. So. And we wish the others best of luck. There we are. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you Thank so you. much for playing, Yasmin and Nadia. Brilliant contestants. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. Try and make sure it's not you. Our category for round two this afternoon is television. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And our round two question concerns TV shows and their theme music. Yeah, we're going to show you six songs on each pass. We asked 100 people for which shows were these used as the opening or closing credit song. If you give us a nice obscure answer, you're going to score fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you're going to score 100 points. There's 12 songs in all across the two passes, 12 shows to guess. Very best of luck. OK, so we are looking for the TV shows to which these were the theme tunes. And we have got Handbags and Glad Rags, Suicide is Painless, I'll Be There For You, On The Inside, Thank You For Being A Friend, and Overkill. I'll read those one more time. Handbags and Glad Rags, Suicide is Painless, I'll Be There For You, On The Inside, Thank You For Being A Friend, and Overkill. OK, so there are the six songs. We are looking for the TV shows to which they were theme tunes. Patrick? Uh, yeah. Right. Mm. Do you know any of these? <laughs> oh, no. um, so I'm going to have to completely wild guess oh, on it's this. It's hard. I, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to guess. Um, thank you for your being your friend. Ever decreasing circles? Wild, wild guess. Well, one of them's a song and the other one is a TV series. Let's see if they match. OK, thank you for being a friend. Ever decreasing circles, says Patrick. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Good luck. Bad luck. What a surprise. I'm afraid that was an incorrect <laughs> answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Patrick, I won't give the correct answer just in case Charlie or Cheryl want to go at the same one. So, Charlie. I think I'll go for handbags and glad rags being the office. Handbags and glad rags, the office. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It is right. 26. 26, not a bad score at all. For the yeah, good answer, Charlie. A hit uh, for variously. Chris Farlow, Rod Stewart had a hit with it. The Stereophonics had a hit with it. And, uh, yeah, used on the office. So then, Cheryl, you're the last person to have this board, so talk us through any of the ones that you think you might know an answer to and then pick one. Uh, that was the only one I knew. So, like Patrick, I'm going to have to take a, a wild guess, but I just don't even recognise the songs, um, so I wouldn't know who sung them or what the words were. So I'm going to go with On The Inside and say Porridge. On The Inside? Porridge. Let's see if that's right, Cheryl. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer on the inside porridge. No surprise. There we are. I'm afraid that's also an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. But you're in good company. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Cheryl, but your logic is impeccable. It's from uh, Prisoner Cell Block H. Do you know, that was in my head, yeah. but I thought... Yeah, That's it was, ridiculous. It was, a number, it was a number three hit as well in, in 1989, that one. There's some very, very big scorers up there. I'll Be There For You, of course, is Friends by the Rembrandts would have scored you 66. Oh, I didn't know it was called that. Yeah, I didn't know it was called that. Uh, Suicide is Painless, the most successful sitcom in history, MASH. That would have scored you 39. Thank You For Being A Friend, another US sitcom. That's from The Golden Girls. That would have scored you 15. Now, Overkill is a pointless answer, but I bet every single person out there would recognise it. It is the very famous theme tune used for 25 years for the bill. 
a bill, but a pointless oh, They weren't answer. kidding when they called it overkill, were they? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very, very well done if you got that at home. That's, uh, that's very tricky. Very, very good indeed. OK, well, let's take a look at those scores. Well, Charlie and Nick, many, many congratulations. Great answer there, Charlie. 26, great score. Patrick and Chris and Cheryl and Mick on 100. So, yes, Mick and Chris, you're going to have to fight it out between you to see who stays and who leaves us at the end of this round. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more song titles on the board, and here they are. We have got Who Are You? I Could Be So Good For You, This Wheel's On Fire, Where Everybody Knows Your Name, With A Little Help From My Friends, Way Down In The Hole. I'll read those one more time. Who are you? I could be so good for you. This wheel's on fire where everybody knows your name with a little help from my friends and way down in the hole. Now, remember, we are looking for the TV shows that had these songs as their theme music. And obviously, you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Mick, you're the joint high scorers on 100 points. Well, that's a stab in the dark for me, I'm afraid. Do you know any of those? No, I can't recognise any of those. This wheel's on fire. Was that the young ones? OK, this wheel's on fire, the young ones, says Mick. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. No red line for you, Mick, because you are the high scorers. Bad luck, Mick. I'm afraid that's another incorrect answer, which means you scored the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to an impressive 200. Richard? Yeah, it's impressive. I won't give the correct answer again, just in case Nick or Chris want to have a go at the same one. Now then, Nick. So remember, we are looking for the TV shows that had these songs as their theme tunes. Didn't Charlie do well? He did. 26, he did. lovely low score. He's, I was very he's, pleased. Uh, you're looking uh, very strong. Um, yeah, and I, I, luckily, I think, uh, well, I only know one. So I think, well, I'm going to have to go for it, I think. So uh, Where Everybody Knows Your Name, I believe, would be Cheers. You're saying Where Everybody Knows Your Name, Cheers. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. No red line again for you, because you are through. 55. Perfectly decent score. That takes your total up to 81. Richard? Yeah, very big score, well-known song, written by an out-of-work songwriter, Gary Portnoy, who also sang it. Now then, Chris, this is the moment of truth. The high scorers are Mick and Cheryl on 200. If you can score 99 or less with this answer, you are through to the next round. Normally, I'd ask you to talk us through the board, but please don't, just in case. Just in case it ends up being a tie. Well, I think I can say one thing, that... Up until about a second ago, until it occurred to me, the only one that I knew was where everybody knows your name. But I think I have a correct answer for another one. Um, hope this is right. With a little help from my friends, I believe was the opening theme song to The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. Now, Patrick, was that you knowing the, that was the no, right I'm answer? Just or are you just thinking that sounds great? <laughs> OK, with a little help from my friends, The Wonder Years. Is that right? And if it is, how many people knew it? There's your red line, immediately beneath the pink one. Yes, it is, Chris. You've done it. Eight, that's a great score. Eight takes your total up to 108. Very well done. Richard? Yeah, well played, Chris. Well remembered. Yeah, the Joe Cocker version of the, uh, that Lennon and McCartney song. Uh, people always ask for TV questions, and I thought this was, this was quite an easy round, and there's, there's some big scores as well. But it seems to have tripped everyone up. I Could Be So Good For You. Minder. Minder, yeah. One of the most famous theme tunes of all time. 41 points. Now, this wheel's on fire. It's not from The Young Ones, but it's sung by a member of The Young Ones cast, Aidan Edmondson, because it was for his, uh, his wife's sitcom, Absolutely Fabulous. 36 points, that one. Who Are You? Do you know what that's used for? No, The Who, Who Are You? The Who's Who Are You. It's used for the original CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. 27 points. And Way Down in the Hole is a pointless answer. Do you know that? It's a, it's a Tom Waits song, and a different person sings it on every new series of The Wire. If you've seen The Wire, that's the theme tune to that. Very well done if you've got that answer. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid Cheryl and Mick. That was very hard, evidently. Mick, did you know? I mean, you were thinking along the right lines with the young ones. Yeah, I guess absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Uh, I th thinking of it now, I remember. <laughs> tough. Very, very tough round. Anyway, we will see you again next time, and we'll look forward to that very much. But meanwhile, thanks very much for playing Mick and Gerald. Great contestants. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> very
Very well done, Nick and Charlie. Patrick and Chris, you've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £5,500. <laughs> now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. And here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters in Hamlet as they could. Characters in Hamlet, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the characters listed in the Dramatis Personae of Shakespeare's Hamlet. The only characters we won't accept are Hamlet himself and any of the characters in The Mousetrap, which is the, the play within a play in Hamlet. Very best of luck at home on this one. Thank you very much. Now then, Nick and Charlie, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Well, we haven't got a clue, <laughs> which is great. Um, so, uh, if it is even counts as a character, it's going to be high, but we're going to say uh, Yorick. Yorick. Patrick and Chris. Well, um, I did a little acting when I was younger. Uh, I actually taught at a Shakespeare camp, so if I get this wrong, I can never go home. <laughs> um, and I think I'm going to go for Polonius. Polonius, very good. So we have Yorick and Polonius. What do you know about Yorick? Do you know anything about, well, do you remember? The, the famous line, no? Uh, I, don't, I don't actually think he's in the play. I think he's dead all the way through. Well, he, he gets a name check. Let's see if it's a right answer, though. Yorick. No. Bad luck. Bad luck. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Patrick and Chris, that means Polonius merely has to be correct, and you have won this question. Let's see if it is Polonius. Is that right? Yes, well done. Right. Ten. Well. There you are. All it had to be was correct, and it was, which means after one question, Patrick and Chris are up 1-0. Richard. Yeah, well done, Chris Polonius, the, uh, the Lord Chamberlain and father of uh, Ophelia and Laertes. Let's take a look at all the answers here. There's a couple of pointless ones. Marcellus, Fortin, Brass and Bernardo, all pointless. Very well done if you said any of those. Rinaldo, Osric and Cornelius all scored two. Valtamand also two. Francisco, three. There's Laertes on five. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern both scored six. Ghost of Hamlet, as Hamlet's Ghost of Hamlet's father, eight. Polonius, there we go, on 10, King Claudius, 11, Horatio, 12, Gertrude, also 12, and Ophelia would have scored you 20. And Yorick is just is a deceased court jester. He only appears as a, essentially as a skull. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, here is your second question. Now, the Nick and Charlie, you have to win this question to stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many teams managed by Jose Mourinho as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any professional football club that Jose Mourinho has managed up to the start of May 2011, please. OK. Now then, Patrick and Chris, you get to go first this time. Um, OK. Um, yeah. yeah. yeah? yeah. <laughs> OK, we're going to go with Real Madrid. Real Madrid. OK, Real Madrid, say Patrick and Chris. Nick and Charlie? We believe there are four, so... It's, it's which one's the right one, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, believe Real Madrid is right. Mm. He should be the current manager, if he hasn't so been. So then there's Porto, fired. Chelsea, Inter Milan, and Real Madrid. So, I, I think, think Porto, probably. We'll, we'll, we'll say, go Porto, yeah. You'll say Porto, so we have Real Madrid and we have Porto. Patrick and Chris went with Real Madrid. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Real Madrid. It's right. 52. Not bad. Nick and Charlie have gone with Porto. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Porto. Yep, well done, you've done it. Very good, 23 for FC Porto. Well played, Nick and Charlie. That's what you needed to do, which means after the second question, it is one all. Richard? Yeah, good head-to-head. -head. There's actually six clubs on the list. The one at the very bottom is very, very tough. Well done, 
anybody who said União Desportiva de Leiria, who were a, a Portuguese club, they took to fourth in their, in their Premier League, would have scored you one point, so one of our hundred knows that. Benfica would have scored you three, he was there briefly, that was his first managerial job. There's FC Porto, 23, won the Champions League with them. Inter Milan won Champions League with them as well, 26. Real Madrid, where he moved in 2010, 52. And Chelsea, 78, uh, won two Premiership titles with them. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, here comes the third question that will decide who goes through to the final. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Reservoir Dogs actors as they could. Reservoir Dogs actors. Yeah, we're looking for any of the six actors who play the characters named after colours in Reservoir Dogs, please. Very good. Nick and Charlie, you go first this time. OK, okay. I, I, I'm the only one of us who's seen it and I can't remember anyone in it. So... We kind of just went for some random person that Nick suggested. Um, so we're going to go for Jimmy Nails. Nail. 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 That helps. Helps. Jimmy might Nail. Not, still might not be a person. Jimmy Nail. <laughs> Jimmy Nail. Patrick and Chris. Like, I've never seen the movie, so I can't help okay. it. OK. I think this is probably wrong. Uh, John Travolta. John Travolta. OK. So we have Jimmy Nail. We have John Travolta. Nick and Charlie said Jimmy Nail. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Ah. Patrick and Chris have gone for John Travolta. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Oh. Wow. Richard. Yeah, John Travolta is in Pulp Fiction, but uh, yeah, not in Reservoir Dogs. As for Jimmy Nail, I think you might be the only people in history to get Alfreda Zane Pet and Reservoir Dogs mixed up. <laughs> Somebody oh, has him. to. Yeah, Somebody has to. Let's take a look. You should genuinely watch Reservoir Dogs. I think you'd rather like it. Mr. Blue was played by a former convict and author, Edward Bunker. Would have scored you one point. Uh, Steve Bashimi played Mr. Pink, much to his chagrin. Scored six points. Quentin Tarantino was in the film himself as Mr. Brown. Would have scored you seven. Michael Madsen was the vicious Mr. Blonde, seven. Harvey Keitel, Mr. White, with 11. And Tim Roth was Mr. Orange, 14. Thank you very much, Richard. I said that that last question was going to be the decider. I lied. <laughs> This question is going to be the decider. Whoever wins this question will go through to the final and play for that massive jackpot. OK, here we go. Good luck. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many capital cities of South America as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any capital city of any country in South America, please. As always, by country, we mean a member of the UN that's a sovereign state in its own right. Where countries have more than one capital, we'll accept either. So this is the land mass of South America. That's everywhere south of Panama, please. Any capital. OK, now then, Patrick and Chris, you go first this time. One. Yeah, I do know an obscure one. Uh, geography's pretty good, and from what I remember, they're quite good at Latin American things, so I've got to pull out a good one. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to go for Paranaimbo. Paranaimbo. I'm not quite sure if I've got the pronunciation of that, but it's the capital of Suriname. Paranaimbo. Yeah. OK, Paranaimbo, say Patrick and Chris. Well, I won't lie. That's exactly what I was going to go for, except um, I don't know how spelling errors and pronunciation errors come into it because I'm pretty sure that's not quite right. So if, can I say the same one? Um, uh, I think if it's substantively different, yeah. OK, well, I believe the capital of Suriname is uh, Paramaribo. Ooh. Having lived in South America for 18 months, can we give me the benefit <laughs> of the doubt? Or... <laughs> Paranaimbo and... Paramaribo. I just never heard it be spoken before. I didn't know. This is pronunciation, isn't it? Well, it's, well, I would say spelt differently as well. Spelled differently as well. Yeah. Okay. Patrick and Chris have gone with Paranaimbo. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Paranaimbo. Jesus, no. yeah. Bad luck. Bad luck. Nick and Charlie, Paramaribo. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. <laughs> One point. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that might be, the, might, be, might be the best ever end to a head to head. Yeah, let's take a look at it. It's actually the, the best answer on the board. Let's take a look at it and at how it's spelt as well. It's, it's very obviously Paramaribo. The capital of Suriname would have scored you one. Uh, Sucre is, uh, is one of the capitals of Bolivia. That would have scored you one. 
Georgetown's Guyana would have scored you two. Asuncion, Paraguay, five. Quito, uh, which is Ecuador, 10. Caracas, which is Venezuela, 14. La Paz, the other capital of Bolivia, would have scored you 15. Montevideo of Uruguay, also 15. Bogota, Colombia, 18. Santiago of Chile, 22. Brasilia, Brazil, 27. Lima, Peru, 30. And Buenos Aires, with 34. Very well played, both teams there. Thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of a very, very hard fought head to head is Patrick and Chris. That's really, really tough. You were, you were thinking of the same place. Yeah. But he's been there, so. <laughs> yeah. I haven't. <laughs> You've been, you've, you've been near it. I've been near it. You've yeah. been near it. Well, Patrick and Chris, you've done phenomenally well. That was a really exciting head-to-head, -head. really exciting. But for the uh, Jimmy Nell, John Travolta <laughs> fiasco. <laughs> I mean, it's been a great round, the whole show. You've done fantastically well. I'm very sorry that we have to say goodbye to you now, but thanks so much for playing. Thanks. But for Nick and Charlie, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £5,500. Well, congratulations, Nick and Charlie. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. So, very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands. £5,500. <laughs> the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people knew. Now, we only had one pointless answer today, and actually, Nick, you gave us that with Jasper. You only have to find one more pointless answer now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are... Acting dames, singer-songwriters, Popular fiction. I personally think singer-songwriters. I, I, that could be quite... Well, then it could be impossible. Could be dark, really dark. That could be, like, 1922. Would you want popular fiction, then? Not desperately. OK, uh, which would you prefer? No pressure. Because popular fiction could come up with something that we know. Yeah, but we five and a half grand on something that. we may know. But then singer-songwriters, I know, like, two. Valid. All right, well, popular fiction, let's do it. So we'll go for uh, popular fiction, please. Popular fiction. Popular fiction it is, OK. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many authors on the BBC Big Read Top 100 as they could. Richard. Yeah, in 2003, the BBC conducted a poll to find the nation's best-loved novel. We're looking for any author who's got one or more books in that top 100. Where a book is written by more than one person, we'll accept either as separate answers. OK, thanks very much, Richard. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £5,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Wow, well, speak okay. up. I don't really know. Okay. Um, well, obviously, there's loads of obvious ones who can we, like we can Brown. discount. Dan Brown, Brown yeah, Dan obviously, Brown. but no. I'm um, thinking Michael Monpergo. Michael? <laughs> really? Oh, really? No. Um, I was thinking... Uh, Somebody like uh, Raymond E. Feist, he writes I'd like fantasy well. and yeah. stuff. But would it not? It was. Was I'm, it? I'm almost 100% confident okay, that it was. Having... I'd, I'd thought of that as well. So okay, cool. well, let's check that out. Um, I like that. Someone who writes like, well, wouldn't John Grisham really obvious, people like that. But what about old novelists? Old novelists, what yeah. do you mean, like Austin and Bronte and all I those other relatively famous people? We've only got one answer, that's good. Um, well, I think uh, I read a book when I was travelling called Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, um, which oh, yeah. is yeah, very yeah, good, and he's it. famous. Yeah. He's um, on an advert for a popular smartphone. Yeah, okay, um, and you also, uh, let's just five seconds the left. obvious, like, um, I don't know, Emily Bronte or something. D.H. <laughs> um, Lawrence. OK, there is your minute up. We were looking for authors in the BBC's Big Read Top 100. I now need three answers from you. OK, uh, we're going to say uh, Raymond E. Feist. Raymond E. Feist. Uh, David Mitchell. David Mitchell. And D.H. Lawrence. And D.H. Lawrence. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Probably Raymond, Raymond E. Feist. Raymond, Raymond E. Feist, Feist. we yeah. shall put last. Who's your least likely? D.H. Lawrence. Yes. Let's put them on the board in that order. D.H. Lawrence, David Mitchell, and Raymond E. Feist. There they are. OK, we were looking for authors in the BBC's Big Read Top 100. You said this was your least confident answer. You only have to find one pointless answer, remember, to win that £5,500 jackpot. 
So let's see, DH Lawrence, is that right? And if it is, how many people said it? Very, very best of luck. DH Lawrence, an incorrect answer. It's obviously not a pointless answer. It's not the end of the world. You only have two chances left to win that jackpot. £5,500, what would you do with £5,500, Charlie? Um, I think I'd go for a very nice holiday. I've got a month off and I'd really like to do something, so... I think that would go a long way in providing that, so... Nick, how about you? Um, well, my best friend is currently living in Ecuador, as are my godchildren, so I'd quite like to go and see them. Very good. OK, well, we're looking for authors in the BBC's Big Read Top 100. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. This has to be correct and it has to be pointless if you're going to win that jackpot of £5,500. Let's see. Is David Mitchell correct? And if it is, how many people said David Mitchell? Oh, it's unbelievable. Ooh, you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. No D.H. Lawrence, no David Mitchell. It's a blow to the kidneys. Um, definitely. Wow. I don't know, maybe it, it was 2003, yeah. wasn't it? It's quite, maybe it's too recent. That's quite a long time ago. OK, well, let's see. Raymond E. Feist. This is your last answer. You thought this was your best shot at a pointless answer. You only have to find this one pointless answer. It has to be right and it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £5,500. Raymond E. Feist. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Raymond E. Feist. It's right. Raymond E. Feist is a correct answer. That was the first thing it had to be. The second thing it has to be is pointless. If this goes down to zero, you are leaving here with £5,500. Yes! You've done it. Very, very well done. Very well Thank done indeed. So Fantastic. Well, well, congratulations. You, you managed to find that all-important, pointless answer, which means you go home with our jackpot of £5,500. Very well done. Yeah, very well played, gents. Nick Paramaribo and Raymond E. Feist. That's the, uh, that's the way to end the show, isn't it? For your incorrect answers, yeah, DH Lawrence, nothing in that top 100. David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas, 2004, that came out, so he was a little bit too late for the list. And uh, Magician, Raymond E. Feist Magician, was number 89 in that top 100. There's a whole bunch of pointless answers. Let's look at a few of them. Alexandra Dumas was there for Counter Monte Cristo. Anna Sewell's Black Beauty was a pointless answer. Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, pointless answer. Helen Fielding's Bridget Jones' Diary, Louis de Bernier's Captain Corelli's Mandolin, and Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind, all of those pointless. And Mario Puzzo's The Godfather, Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children was actually number 100, and Wilkie Collins' The Woman in White. Well done if you've got any of those. Lots of others. There's Gabriel Garcia Marquez, John Fowles, Dostoevsky, all sorts of people on that list. Well done, guys. Very well done indeed. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Nick and Charlie, who go away with today's jackpot of £5,500. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.